Welcome back everyone to another video and we finally have the Heike 960 in the house and here it is the recently released board that is set to completely beat up the Raspberry Pi uh, in all matters of performance and features. So is this true? Well on the face of it, it is. So let's go through what this board actually is and before that let's take a look at a quick unboxing. So as the unboxing video proceeds, let me just run you guys through a few of the specs and the features that this board has on board and then we can go into a little bit more detail. For now, this review is just a first day review. I just received this board a few hours ago and um, this is my a very very quick review of the board. Uh, I haven't had too much time to play with it. Of course, I did my experiments and just uh, very basic stuff. So based on that, this is my initial review. So as for the specs, uh, the Heike 960 is powered by the latest Krillin 960 SoC and hence the name. Now the Krillin SoC is manufactured by High Silicon, which is a company owned by Huawei. So basically you are getting Huawei's top of the line SoC and this actually comes very close at par with the Snapdragon 820 as we'll see in the benchmarks. So the uh, Krillin 960 comes with octa cores uh, with a big little architecture. So we have four big cores and they are Cortex A73 clocked at 2.4 gigahertz and for and four smaller cores uh, Cortex A53 uh, clocked at around 1.8 gigahertz. Uh, and as for the GPU, we have the Mali uh, G71 MP8 uh, so it is a sort of a mid-range mid to high-end uh, GPU so it should be more than enough for basic gaming needs and uh, we have 3 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM so that is actually a very fast and uh, a, a lot of RAM so 3 gigs is a lot uh, for something like a development board I've seen stuff with 4 gigs and they don't actually end up using all of that even 2 gigs is more than enough and in this case you are getting 3 gigs of RAM uh, it also comes with 32 gigabytes of UFS flash so it's inherently faster than EMMC 5.1 and it's 32 gigabytes which is actually a lot and people have done some amazing stuff with just 8 gigabytes or just 4 gigabytes and taking that into account uh, 32 gigabytes is actually quite a lot of memory uh, so this should be more than enough for all your development needs to pull a lot of source code directly onto the uh, board and you know have a lot of stuff just lying in there uh, and so storage is not a big worry two usb 3 ports in the form of usb type a uh, and one usb type c port for otg and connectivity to the computer to your desktop for flashing rom and all of that stuff so again there is a complete lack of usb 2 we are seeing that fading out in many recent development boards it's a trend that is continuing and here we see a complete uh, absence of usb 2 based ports next we have an hdmi port so i think that is cake capable of at least 4k at 30 fps and 1080p at 60 we have a micro sd card slot a 60 pin uh, high speed connector and a 40 pin low speed connector again both of these are uh, in in accordance to the uh, 96 boards uh, specification so though these are standard ports and they will work with standard 96 boards uh, connectors uh, and accessories again uh, what uh, we have a dual uh, bluetooth uh, and wi-fi so we have bluetooth 4.0 and wi-fi wi-fi 2.5 gigahertz as well as wi-fi 5 gigahertz so you get a plethora of you know connectivity options um, apart from that we also have a mini pci m.2 uh, pci gen 2 port so that means you can further expand it by practically having super high speed nvme ssds 
uh, or, or stuff like that attached to it and pretty much a lot of PCI Express stuff that can actually go in there and in the future I would really would like to experiment more with this port uh, by adapters and stuff and try and see what all uh, PCI expansions that I can use with it. So this is about the hardware it is as you can tell a very very high end device. This is not to be taken lightly and yes in the specs and features department it does beat up the Raspberry Pi. So let's come to the software and why why this board actually exists is that this is an official reference board for the Android open source project and uh, backed up by Google. So Google actually considers this as a board that can officially run the uh, Android open source operating system and apart from that you don't need to have some other source code someone port the source code because the actual source code that is provided by Google can directly run this board. So there is no third party OS not even by the manufacturers or anyone else this directly has support from Google so you can be rest assured that pretty much every Android version up to the point that this board is completely outdated will come uh, with support for the Hikey 960. So this is the main reason this board exists for AOSP development. It's an official board. So what does it come with? Uh, by default, it was loaded with Android O. So believe it or not, this board is so new uh, that we don't have a branch or support for the Hikey 960 on anything less than Android O, not even Android N. So if you go ahead and you decide to compile a very stable Android, the best you can get is Android O. So that means as soon as Android O is released, uh, it this will have a very very stable build of Android O and whatever its name is. So yes, this board comes with the latest build of Android. So let's get a bit into the benchmark. Now uh, again, as I said, it is running Android O and that is still very much under development. The source code is not properly and completely stable so here's a very good example of it so what actually happened was as soon as I received this board I wanted to see how well it performs and I installed Geekbench 3 and that resulted in a score of mere 700 points on single core and around 2500 on multi core and that was not really within uh, uh, not really up to the mark to the performance according to the kind of CPU this board has. So actually it has a much much powerful CPU on board and that is that score is actually ma matching perfectly with my Moto G4 which has a very mid-range processor with only uh, 8 Cortex A53 cores and no, no Cortex A73 or anything else and the clock speed that it can reach is only 1.5 GHz. So again uh, this was not the best performance and I knew that so what I did was pop in another build so another thing with the 96 boards is you don't have to use any odd uh, Chinese you know flashing tool to get Android running on this so since we have official support for Android by Google you can simply use fastboot to flash your builds and the uh, guys at Linaro do provide a very simple script that does all of that automated for you and that means that uh, basically you don't have to go ahead running softwares that you don't trust uh, like you have with the banana pie and some of the AM logic boards where you are running softwares and that too are Windows based so you are developing in Ubuntu and then you have to switch over to Windows to flash all of that stuff so that is all gone it's all simplified you can go ahead and use fastboot and adb without any issues to flash your new operating system on it and that works as fine so i went ahead and i moved from build 98 to build 120 just in case you are planning to buy this board and the score jumped up so high that they are actually matching with uh Galaxy S7 with the Snapdragon 820 CPUs. So uh, just in a few moments, I will show you guys the comparison. So the scores actually bumped up to a, to 
to a single score score uh, single core score of 1200 uh, and a multi core score of 3800 so uh, 3800 so that is a very big jump and this is something that i am expecting to see day after day on this board because this is still very much in development and the other thing that i found really nice about this board right out of the box is that it is not running some lame old linux kernel like uh, linux kernel 3.10 i mean that kernel is officially supported it is a long time uh, lo long term support kernel but development boards aren't really supposed to run it and i've got so many arm based development boards that are running the old linux 3 kernels so this actually runs the latest Uh, Linux four uh, Linux LTS kernel, which is the four point four variant, and uh, the process of porting it to four point nine is already underway, and it works pretty well. There are a few issues still remaining with Linux kernel four point nine that need to be ironed out, but the support for kernel four point nine is right around the corner. So this is really good. Most Android boards don't really run on the latest kernel. Uh, for mobile phones i can understand they have a very long development cycle so they take whatever uh, the most stable kernel is out of the box and that tends to be pretty old but for something like a development board you really really want to have the latest kernel so yes it is running kernel 4.4 at the moment and soon will be running 4.9 so that is extremely good to see uh, again all the sources for everything is right there available on google Uh, Google has a page dedicated to flashing, uh, compiling, and flashing your own Android build onto the board. So that is absolutely great. So again, uh, just to keep things short, uh, one last thing I'll do is run through a score of few of the benchmarks that I have performed uh, on this board. Uh, and again, these performance benchmarks can increase anytime soon. Uh, maybe decrease a little bit and change somewhere here and there so if you are into android development this is the board to look into because it really has a lot of development going on right now and it is a very interesting time uh, to own this board and to have like uh, a, a knowledge of what kind of development goes into this even if you are not directly uh, contributing to the development itself So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at benchmarks. So the 3D Mark, uh, I have performed two tests: Slingshot Extreme and Ice Storm Extreme. For the Slingshot Extreme, uh, it was a OpenGL 3 benchmark. It scored around uh, 1,048 points. On the Ice Storm Extreme, it scored around 87,100 points, and uh, that is a OpenGL 2 benchmark. On the Octane Browser benchmark, it actually beat up. Uh, my upboard which is a big feat because the upboard is running like intel atom processor uh, and a much powerful gpu even though it's an intel hd gpu so um it scored around 76000 in octane completely blowing out every other board that i have and probably every other board consumer grade board that is on the market Again, Antutu was uh, again not that good at around sixty six thousand. So uh, again, these performance matrices may improve any time soon or maybe a little bit later. And then uh, on Geekbench, as I said, the single core was one thousand two hundred uh, around, and the multi core was thirty eight hundred around. So again, as you can see in the performance comparison. Uh, on the geekbench it is extremely close to the performance or I, i'll say very very similar to the performance of the uh, snapdragon 820 and that is a lot to say it is a very powerful processor here are a few things i not necessarily liked about the board so the first thing is it is extremely costly now the performance just does Uh, justify the cost here. Yeah, I mean, it is a top-end smartphone, uh, basically on a board, but um, it is still. If you consider it buying for the type of things you do with a Raspberry Pi and as a Raspberry Pi uh, directly uh, a Raspberry Pi replacement, it is going to look a lot costly. So it comes in around two hundred and thirty. Uh, dollars or thereabouts. I'll have the cost on the screen. So that is the official pricing from Lenovo. And um, again, this board 
does justify the cost in its performance but only if you are buying it for something more than the raspberry pi and if you think that you have outgrown sort of outgrown the raspberry pi and need to get more into the aosp development uh, very specifically and the linux kernel development again specifically that kind of stuff so uh, and that is what the 96 boards is all about to make a sort of a common ground for multiple arm vendors and have like a common uh, source code for all of them instead of having separate images to boot on separate devices and to get it to be as generic as possible so if you are interested in that sort of development then yes it is a justifiable cost at this point and again the performance is right there the next thing was if someone is actually paying that much amount i do expect them to ship out with some kind of a case or some kind of a stand because uh, all of uh, all i got uh, apart from the uh, power supply so i did get the power supply again i didn't buy it uh, lemaker did send me this for review but uh, all of that was in the box is this board so i don't really have uh, anywhere to keep it apart from its own or on its own box uh, again here is the board i think i should have done this earlier uh, this is the Raspberry Pi 3 and this is the Hikey 960. I hope you guys can see it. I hope the camera focuses. Uh, and yep, uh, about the same size I'd say. A little bit uh, on the slimmer side, uh, the Hikey. Uh, and yeah, so apart from that i don't really have a lot of complaint on this board it runs off a standard 12 volt power supply which is actually pretty good if you ask me uh, you know uh, though these are easier to find can provide with more power it has a barrel kind of a uh, jack which i'm always a big fan of because the micro usb, USB uh, cannot supply that much current uh, and it has a very well spaced USB port so I don't really see this on a lot of board but uh, what I really found out that the fattest of my uh, pen drives were e easily able to fit with anything else connected anywhere else and that is something I have issue with on the Raspberry Pi uh, and many other boards uh, again the USB-C port is also very welcome so yes the only complaint was the lack of any sort of case and uh, it would be a bit hard to find something uh, some sort of a case online so the other uh, you know sort of a solution to the case problem is uh, don't have a case uh, like uh, as i said in one of my previous videos the case uh, uh, there's no case on the upboard but it's still very safe to use because the whole uh, back panel has a solid metal back plate and that sort of uh, saves uh, the uh, PCB from shorting out on anything that uh, might be on the table so again this is also a nice solution that could have been uh, put to use so this is just a little bit of criticism uh, in terms of you know having to have uh, just having to have keep this on right on the table it's not very safe so that was pretty much about it so of course this I mean it has been over 20 minutes since I've been recording but uh, yes this was a very quick review this was a day one review um, of the 960 board uh, till now it is looking really really good uh, and there will be a lot more AOSP and Android development um, stuff going on this still doesn't have a, a Debian build and uh, since this is sort of made for android development i do not really expect to there to be a, a debian build uh, straight off maybe a few months down uh, there will be but not right now so again this is an aosp development board or android open source project based development board really nice board uh, have a look at their website and what kind of specs it is running and uh, i will leave all of that linked in the description and thank you so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed this video and i will see you all in the next one